Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, fellow procrastinators and quarantiners. Welcome to another live capture webcast where tonight I'm going to show you a little bit more about the new capture 2020 features than I had time for during the uh, release event. Um, it is uh, largely unscripted tonight. I have a few specific things I want to show you. So uh, if there's anything in particular that you would like me to talk about, then make sure to write that in the comments below to the right above or wherever the comments field is. Um, try to keep it to things related to news in Capture 2020 though. Uh, that is our primary focus, but um, if we run short of that, I might take more general questions later on as well. Before we move on to this though, I have a few other things I would like to mention in our news segment. Uh, the first one is related to the changes we've made to the licensing of our educational offer. Um, this offer is for students in schools and the change we've made is that students that are using the Capture educational offer, that is in schools, they can now run or unlock their Capture key files at home in their personal laptops because many schools are closed and their only opportunity is to work from home as opposed to any labs of computers set up with Capture licenses. So if you're a student in a school that normally has the uh, capture installation in the lab, uh, then make sure to speak with your teachers or professors uh, about this change in the capture licensing so that you can work from home while your school is shut down. Moving on, um, just before we released Capture 2020, or actually a couple of months before that, we uh, wrote a blog post about some issues we've been having with uh, a few graphics cards on Mac OS. Uh, there's been one or two blog posts about this, and what I would like to offer is a little bit of an update for those who haven't seen that through other media. We have been reporting bugs to Apple about all issues with GPUs on Mac OS, and they have, in a sense, acknowledged them. Um, although, in reality, this means they have actually passed them on to mostly Intel in this case. So we don't have any, any tangible information as to when these issues might be fixed, but we believe that with a little bit of luck, for the next uh, Mac OS updates, I think it's 10.15.5 is going to be the next series. That is a series where we might actually see some GPU driver updates. So with a little bit of luck, any of those Mac OS GPU issues will be resolved before summer. We have set up a dedicated page on our website. You can find it if you go to the download section on the web page. I will show you later on. Uh, we've set up a specific page with all the different Mac and GPU combinations where and whether we know there are known issues with these combinations or not. Uh, but we, uh, we continue hoping that these will be fixed soon. We have managed to work around quite a few of these issues. Uh, unfortunately, it means that performance on some Mac hardware is worse than it could have been. Uh, but fortunately, at this point, at least Capture does run stable -ish on nearly all machines. So let's, um, let's jump, in, jump into some Capture 2020 features. Uh, let's switch over to the, this view. Thank you. So again, if there's anything special you would like me to show you, if you have any questions about what I'm showing you, then please write in the comments field. Um, Try and keep it to 2020 stuff. Um, and uh, let me know if there's anything in particular you would like me to show you. I have a few things that I know I will start with though, uh, based uh, on my personal preference as well as what I've seen people ask about on social media as well as in our support mail. 
And the first thing I want to show you is the reflection planes where we have some things to sort out. So I'm going to use the project file that I used in the uh, release webcast. And let me kill a few lights, uh, which I know will get in the way soon if I don't. There we go. So in this project file, we've got a box that uh, functions as the uh, stage of this scene. And what I want to do is make the top of the box reflective, uh, mirror-like, if you may. And the way we do that is by inserting from the library, a reflection plane object. We simply drag and drop this into the design and you can see this um, plane shape appearing here as a green grid. And the next thing I need to do now is to move it down to the stage and align it with the floor or the box in this case, that is the stage. And what I mean by that is simply that I need to move it down here until it snaps with the stage. Now you may also notice, uh, let's stick to a front view, that in the corners of a reflection plane, there are small lines pointing up. Um, perhaps easier to see in 3D. You can see in each of the four corners, there is a little line sticking up. This indicates the active side of the reflection plane. That is, you need to make sure these are pointing out where you want the reflections to happen, otherwise it will not work. So the back of the reflection plane is, in a sense, inactive. Now, we can already see the reflections in the stage here. You can see the, the lectern reflecting in the floor. You can see the beams reflecting in the floor. And the reason for that is that the material applied to the floor already had a high smoothness. So let's go to the properties of the box here and the material, select edit, takes us straight to the material editor where you can see we have a 70% smoothness. If I move this smoothness slider down, you will gradually see the reflections disappearing. And if I move it up, you will see the reflections getting stronger. But I also want to point out that the other properties here work as well, such as the metallic slider. So if we imagine that we had a reflective plastic floor, such as a dance mat, it would be more appropriate to set the metallic to zero. Whereas if we have a glass material for the reflections, it is better to have the metallic at 100%. So we do respect the physical based rendering model of materials in the reflections. And that was one thing I wanted to point out. And I also wanted to point out that the, um, the corners of the reflection plane have these little green indicators that indicate which side of the reflection plane is active. And as I said in the beginning of the webcast, if you have any questions about the things I'm showing you, or if there is anything in particular you would like me to show, then please write so in the comments field and uh, I will try and answer that. Um, another question that I've seen being asked about reflection plane is if there is a maximum number of them that you can have. And the answer is, in a sense, yes. You can, add, you can add as many reflection planes as you want, but after a certain number of them, uh, the additional ones will not actually work. I think the number is somewhere around 16. But to be honest, reflection planes, they do draw quite a bit of performance and you are likely to hit performance issues long before you run out of reflection planes. <coughs> Excuse me. And finally, if you have irregular shaped stages or surfaces that you want to make reflective 
and you are tempted to use multiple reflection planes to sort of mask the area that you want to be reflective, then don't. It is better to have one reflection plane that is a little bit larger than it would need to be than to use multiple reflection planes. And finally, of course, if you export for an older capture version, you will lose any reflection planes in your design. Um, so I'm going to answer a question in between here from uh, Sarah. She writes, um, using OS X based lighting software with loopback address uh, working good. Is it possible to use Mac lighting software but visualize on Capture 2020 running on Windows 10 uh, on a PC? Yes, definitely. Um, Capture listens to DMX and communication protocols over the network. So you can have a controller or uh, an offline software on another computer speaking with Capture on Windows or Mac. And you can mix these. Um, of course, there are pitfalls as always with networking. Uh, check that your firewall isn't on in, in Windows or Mac OS because that could block your traffic. And then depending on the specific protocols you use, there might be things to, to look out for as well. But consult the manual of your control software. Uh, that is probably the best way to, uh, best place to start, to be honest. Um, so I can see we have um, a question on reflection planes, uh, whether or not it's possible to throw back light beams. And the answer is no. Reflection planes enable what we call secondary reflections. The primary reflection is lighting you see on objects because that is lighting reflected from a fixture. And secondary reflections is when you then see that lighting reflected in another object. But we do not support see, um, sending beams off of a mirror, for instance. So you cannot use it to bounce mirrors around corners, for instance. This is, of course, something we would like to do one day. Um, it has some interesting performance implications, um, so I can't really say whether that is sooner or later. But I'm sure one day we'll have that as well. Um, that question was from Chris S. Johansson. Uh, next question is from um, Lajislav Sunset. He is uh, asking uh, about normal maps uh, in materials. So this, this is, does kind of relate to reflection planes because normal maps help you create a 3D effect in essence on a surface without having lots of extra polygons. Uh, supporting normal maps is something we have planned. It's on what we would call our short horizon, um, but it's not available in Capture 2020. Ah, lots of great questions coming in. Um, Stefan van der Walt is asking whether the DocHouse 2020 file will be available soon for download to practice. Um, to be honest, I think I, I, to be perfectly honest, have forgotten a little bit about this, yes. Uh, the DocHouse project file 2020, as well as the other file, uh, the Chateau 2020 file, will be made available. Uh, unless I forget about it completely when I leave here today, it should probably be possible to make it happen this week. Uh, John Rogers is asking whether focus planes can provide a live readout of lux levels at the point of focus. Which brings us to focus planes, which are different from reflection planes, although I can see how some might confuse that. I have personally. So let's take a look at the focus planes. Let's... Um, Let's drop the reflection plane here for a moment because um, frankly, reflective stages can be quite annoying. Uh, so let's enable widgets and let's drop the reflection plane and add a focus plane instead. So they're under the built-in category. It's called focus plane. I'm sniffing a bit, but it's very cold in here. I imagine because the building is shut down and we're the only people who want to be here. Uh, they don't want to heat it, 
it's it's not a corona sniff don't worry i'm sure it wouldn't reach you through the webcast anyway um, so i've dragged in a focus plane from the library into the design and you can see this grid appearing where the focus plane is it's got a little eye widget icon in the middle and i could now switch it over for instance to the solid uh, white mode which um, can be useful but the question i got was about the heat map mode and the question was whether there is a live readout of lux levels and in a sense there is um, because we can set what the minimum and maximum lux levels are for the heat map so if i jog down the maximum lux here to 690 lux ish i can see some lighting is now hitting the redmost color here in the heat map which tells me the lux level is around 690 here so obviously we would have the technology for another kind of lux readouts it's not what we focused on for 2020 uh, but there is a crude workaround uh, like the one i showed you here where you can play with the minimum and maximum sliders to find where the heat map maxes out or not uh, Mitch Plus uh, is asking, is the mirror effect arriving soon and presumably referring to the bouncing of beams? Honestly, I don't know how soon. We have a few other things that we think are a bit more important to get into capture than the ability to bounce beams, uh, which is a rather specific feature, to be honest. So we have the focus plane up here. Um, where I have a few things I could point out as well. But uh, let's start with turning on some more regular lighting. I think I have a group of uh, front lights here. Yeah. So this is, let's, let's dial back the, uh, the lux level here. Um, somewhere like that so one question we've got uh, that has confused some is is when the focus plane functions and not now, as you can see when it is selected we can see the heat map and when it is not selected it disappears so if a focus plane is selected then we can toggle it between these three modes but it's also active whenever we enter focus mode. So I, if I select a fixture here and use the focus command, we go into focus mode, and then automatically all the focus planes in my design become active. And the option I have here now to toggle between the mode will affect all focus planes in the design. And this is when the hidden mode is useful because I might want to focus without the focus planes uh, for a moment. So focus planes work either when selected or when in focus mode because it is a tool specifically built for the focus mode. Nick Vedder is asking whether this video will be available to watch later. Um, yes, once we've managed to stitch together the, the part in the beginning that was censored by Facebook with the rest, we will uh, try and upload this um, as soon as possible to our YouTube channel. And given what happened today, I suspect we might try to broadcast on YouTube in the future because uh, we're not particularly eager to have our uh, webcasts cut off in the middle or the beginning. So yes, Nick, you will be able to watch this later. Um, so let's uh, start with the blank project file and uh, head to the question from Maxim Diver, uh, or however that is pronounced. Uh, should we wait for updates in scaffolding section, especially 2.07 meter standard elements? So. As you may know, we have added to the library scaffolding. So there are a few pre-built uh, structures like the scaffolding tower. 
but also individual parts available under scaffolding parts. And it's important to point out at this point that these are no-name scaffolding parts. These are not layer parts, for instance. While, of course, some of the dimensions of the parts available on our list also exist in the layer catalog, because this does not try to mimic the exact properties of layer, we might not have all their exact dimensions. So as such, at the moment, the scaffolding in Capture is useful to create the visual appearance of scaffolding. But if you want to build especially any large constructions of scaffolding with specific layer pieces and you need it to be exact down to the decimeter on a 10 meter stage, then this is not the tool for you. Um, that's not to say that we might not go there in the future, uh, but right here and now, uh, we didn't add the scaffolding parts in order to make capture a scaffolding construction software. So it is there to make some quick and nice scaffold looking things where you don't care whether it's off by seven centimeters in your construction drawing. Uh, Emiliano Morgia is asking whether single scaffolding elements snap together and yes, they most definitely do. So let's draw something uh, from scratch. So the pre-built scaffolding structures are actually just groups of the scaffolding parts. So you can draw from scratch or take apart one of the pre-builds, but let's draw something super simple from scratch. Let's start with, a, let's say, two columns. Uh, let's have a, uh, a beam. And this is where I'm also answering Emiliano's questions, whether the parts will be snapping together, because as you can see, they are. Um, so I can easily, um, let's make a quick copy. Let's rotate that and snap that from the front. So you can see that it's easy to assemble these parts and yes, they do snap together. Um, and you can build things from scratch or you can mix and match with the pre-built structures. So many good questions here tonight. Um, one that isn't necessarily specific for Capture 2020 is from Sven Witt. He's asking when the 3D models of the fixtures will be more detailed to make the render more realistic. And the answer to this question, and now I hope that I have a good memory and I mustn't touch my face. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, they've got too many fixtures. Uh, so that one does not. Uh, I'm not gonna, and that one does. All right, excellent. So let's switch to custom view. So as you can clearly see, we actually already have fixtures in the library with 3D models. Um, but this isn't something you turn on overnight and 20,000 fixtures suddenly have 3D models. It is um, quite painstaking work actually, uh, but doesn't progress by hundreds over a week. But 3D models for fixtures are being added. Uh, Atlabase is adding them for us. That is where we get our library. And whenever a new fixture is added, if it's reasonably easy to do and there are models available, then Atlabase will add the 3D model as well. If you have specific uh, fixtures you work with where you would like to have the 3D model added, then by all means, mail us, mail library at Capture. Um, there are something like 16,000 fixtures to go through, so we might as well start with the ones you're using um, if you let us know. Otherwise, you can always just wait three years uh, and hope that your fixtures are the ones we get to soon enough. But yeah. um, Sven is also asking why the fixtures don't snap to a scaffolding pipe. Well, I guess because we didn't quite think of that. Um, to be honest, 
Um, we did our, have our hands full with making the parts we have work well and snap well together. And there are some obvious extensions to this, like uh, more specific dimensions that have been requested, more snapping. There are some specific scaffolding dimensions that would be difficult for us to do if you want snapping to work well. Uh, so I can definitely see fixtures snapping to scaffolding in the near future. Uh, but at the moment, it's, it's just not possible. So, I would like to move on to one of the other things I wanted to show you that we also got a question for, and that's related to the reports. So, I'm going to go back and reopen that DocHouse project file. Switch to the quad view and scroll down to the reports. So the specific question I got is, can you explain the new report options? And yes, I can. Um, we redesigned the report editor to make it possible to customize reports in any way. As a result of this, you can now also build new reports from scratch in any way. But when you get into the reports category in Capture and you click the Add button, things look pretty much like they did in Capture 2019. We have a few, you can call them templates of reports that you can choose from. So let's select fixture report to create a new fixture report. Let's click the edit button to open the editor. Let's resize it. And if you remember what the fixture report looked like in Capture 2019, you will see that it's very similar. There are a few changes like the addition of the location column. Um, but what is new is all the stuff here on the right hand side. So what we can see here is that our report consists of one table that draws information from fixtures. That is the source of the data. Then it contains a number of columns and these are the unit, channel, circuit, name, and so on columns. And finally, at the end here, there is a sorting defined, which means that it's primarily sorted by unit, secondarily by the channel column, followed by the circuit and patch columns. Now, let's imagine that I don't care too much about the unit column because obviously I haven't added any unit information, then I can select the unit column and press delete. And there goes my unit column. So um, I might also decide to lose the filters, gobos, and accessories columns, like that, as well as the focus and note columns. So it's super easy to remove any columns you don't want to have. Now let's imagine um, that this report is primarily for my Sokepex cabling. Um, and so the one thing I care most about is actually the circuit column. Then I might want to select that and move it up in the list of columns, which means it goes first on the report. So by moving columns up and down in my list here, I move them on paper. So I can change the order of the columns in any way I want. Next, I've al already mentioned that uh, we can sort this in different ways. Another nice feature is the filtering. This lets me remove lines of data in the table that don't have any information. So in this case, we only have circuit information for the first six fixtures. So I could select the circuit column, add that to the filtering. Ah, actually, I had more fixtures. So now you can see that only fixtures with circuit information are in my report. And they are sorted uh, actually primarily by the channel and then by the circuit. I could change that, but I don't think it makes a difference in this case. And finally, uh, the one feature I haven't shown you yet is the grouping. Um, 
Now in this example, uh, you can see that we have a number of source fours and four uh, Robin, fix, Robi, Robin fixtures. I could now split this table into two parts, one for each fixture type if I wanted to. So to do that, I would select the name column, which contains the fixture names, and add this to the grouping. This now creates separate tables for separate fixture names. So first we have the source force, their circuiting, followed by the Roby Robins and their circuiting. And of course, um, yeah, I've already shown you how to remove uh, columns. I've shown you how to reorder columns. Now, if I realize that I would like to have my accessories column back, then I can right click on columns, select add columns. This now shows me the columns that I've removed or that weren't in there from the beginning. And if I'm missing the accessories column, I can click add and it is added again. It goes in at the end of the list, uh, but I can bring back any columns I was missing. So as you can see, we have a lot of flexibility here. There's also one new option under the main node here in the tree called report, which is called page break. This illustrates with a thin red line where the page breaks will happen if I print uh, or export these documents to HTML. So that is quite useful for printing multi-page report where you want to start each block on a separate page. So I can see the, the questions are um, pretty much pouring in here. Um, so Stefan is asking about the locations report. Uh, we have a locations report here. He's saying he cannot access location on any trust he has in his file. So it's a rather specific question and I might need to see the project file, but in general fixture locations are the unit name of the nearest trust. So in this drawing, uh, Let's switch to paper mode. We have some fixtures on a um, truss front of house. And this truss is labeled. It's got unit set up. So it says FT for front truss. So all of the source force here in the location report are located on, on FT, uh, the front truss. Um, now in this case, this location report, I have probably modified it. I have grouped it by the purpose of the fixtures actually, which is why it says front light here. Um, I decided for whatever reason to do that instead. Um, also a question on the fixture location report. What is the coordinate field? So I think that one is just missing. No, it's not. So this isn't actually a location report, I think. Extra location report. Ah, no. Um, there is no coordinate field on the location report. However, there is a rigging point report, uh, which very much does have a coordinate field. So on the rigging point report, the coordinate field is the XYZ coordinates of the rigging points on the report. And this information can be shown in a number of different ways, which is customizable. Please excuse me for a moment. Uh, customizable in the properties of the rigging point itself, where there's a coordinate style property I believe the default is XZ, simply showing the X and Z coordinates of the rigging points. But there are a few other options here like showing stage right, left or upstage, downstage instead, um, especially for those who are not used to capture and captures coordinate system, uh, the stage right, down, upstage terminology may be easier to understand. 
Uh, Michael is asking whether it's possible to add prices to device properties. Um, you could uh, uh, use any of the text fields to add price information, but it will not summarize in any report, I'm afraid. Uh, he's also asking whether there is a chance to mark the numbers and connection directions on LED screen panels. Um, that is a very good uh, request, which we uh, shall note and take with us. I think we should do that. It's not possible at the moment. Ooh. Max uh, Ferreira is noting that in the old version, that is... Uh, an older version, it was possible to see some more uh, details of fixtures in the library, uh, which was removed uh, when we redesigned the library tab. Um, at the moment, it's not possible to see this information until you've actually dragged it into uh, your design. This is something we would like to fix in a future version of Capture, but the only workaround at the moment is to actually add it to your design in order to see it. Andy James is asking for uh, recommendations on uh, PC specs for uh, visualizing with Capture 2020. This is a question that is virtually impossible to answer. It's like asking how long a string is. Um, the heavier your design is, the more horsepower Capture will need. Our new automatic quality system will render as detailed as possible given your hardware. So the only way to know for sure really is to draw a design that represents what you would do in Capture and then test that on a computer that you might consider purchasing. A good trick at that point is to export a presentation file and bring that with you to the computer store. That is the only way you can know for sure whether a specific computer is up for the task. You can always use uh, performance comparison charts and such, but it can be difficult to visualize uh, what sort of performance uh, you will get. All right, a few more questions here. Um, Sven Witt is asking whether PBR materials will be part of Capture 2020. So we've had PBR materials in Capture for quite a few releases already, actually. Uh, Capture uses physical-based rendering in real time for the material properties that we do have, uh, such as the smoothness and the metallic um, and the base color of the material. Of course, a material model can have a lot more properties like the uh, normal maps that were mentioned before. You can have smoothness maps for objects that are smooth in some places and rough in some places. You can have multi-layer multi, multi -layer lacquer paint, such as you have on a car where you have a base coat and then you have a top coat and so on. So we will continue extending the material model in Capture over the coming years, um, property by property, basically, um, as long as performance is, is reasonable as well. Uh, Emiliano Morgia is asking whether we will have GDTF in the future, and no, I don't think we will have GDTF in the future. Uh, we get our libraries from Atlabase and they are much better, uh, so we don't see why anyone would want to have GDTF in Capture, to be honest. Uh, so, no. Um, <laughs> Michal uh, Bistritsky is asking uh, when the next release date is. Um, uh, that's about a year away. Uh, of course, there will be bug fix releases in between, but we gener generally release once per year, and that is what we are sticking to. We are nearing the end of my voices capabilities and this webcast, so I don't think we'll be able to take more questions at this point. Um, Bas de Vries is asking, uh, in the convert lines to pipe feature, whether it's possible to adjust the diameter. At this point, it is not. Um, John Hewson is asking whether it's possible to change the name of a column in a report. Uh, that is presumably 
in here, whether if you preferred another word instead of coordinate, if you could change that. It's not possible in capture. It is definitely a obvious uh, enhancement for the next version. In the meanwhile, you can definitely export the report to HTML, which you can open in Excel or a text editor or an HTML editor software. And there you could rename, well, you could change anything in the entire report basically. Uh, so that would be the best workaround for uh, renaming columns at the moment. Oh, then I have a question in Swedish from Daniel. Uh, is it possible to export a presentation on a Mac and open that on a PC? Yes, definitely. This is a new feature in Capture 2020. If I were to export a presentation from this project file, let's put it on the desktop. Um, webcast will be a great name for the file. Let's exit capture. Then there is now a zip file on my desktop, which is called webcast. Now, if we extract the contents of this, and I've messed up zip files on my computer, so uh, I have to open it with 7-zip. So inside this zip file is actually both an exe file for PC or for Windows and a .app for Mac OS. So when you export a presentation, you get a zip file that has contents both for Mac and for Windows. Mm, let's have one more question. Um, not that I like them. <laughs> I don't like difficult questions. Um, I answered John Hewson's questions about changing the name of the columns. Um, Christoph Gasser is asking whether it's possible to add mirror balls. Um, so we have a few things we'd like to be able to do one day before we retire, and that includes mirror balls, perfectly simulated uh, smoke machines. Um, yeah, those are the. I would like to have a confetti as well or a snow machine, but I'm not sure anyone else would like that as much as I would. Um, no, no mirror balls at the moment. However, if you go to the Capture Design and Visualization group on Facebook, uh, there are quite a few interesting workarounds for mirror ball-like effects to convey the feeling of a mirror ball. Uh, but I fear we will not go properly disco until in quite a few years from now. Uh, mirror balls are thousands of small mirrors and it's just horrible from a programmer's point of view, that is. So, thank you very much, everyone, for sticking with us through the um, difficulties we'd had with Facebook, but also with the general difficulties of real life at the moment. Uh, we very much hope that you are all staying safe and that this passes soon and we can all go back to things we prefer in the real world. We are happy that Capture can help you do things in the virtual world in the meanwhile. Uh, so we try to be as attentive as possible to our support mails on social media at, at this time where there is a lot of office activity going on. So stay safe out there and uh, I hope to see you soon again in our next live webcast, which might be on YouTube. Good evening.